oh hi uh, i am very fond of uh, solving this kind of simple kids problem so that's my weakness so whenever uh, in childhood uh, i saw some kind of this maze problem it used to very much amuse me a lot so essentially uh, in machine learning we have these kind of steps that is going around so that mainly is in the reinforcement learning or for game development so an agent will learn how to pick up the paths so uh, when uh, we were kids or at the lower level we used to solve this kind of small small maze problem in order to find the path and there was some constraint like uh, we want to find the path in minimal optimal time which is possible and we want to maximize the reward so this is a very simple maze problem that you see so here you don't see any constraint as such just the agent here uh, you can see a turtle and here there is a fruit so that is the reward and there are not many rewards just only one reward also there are no constraints but in the real world when you have uh, played different games there will be different kinds of constraints that will be put forth in front of you uh, when you solve this kind of problems so uh, when as a child we used to solve this kind of problems it was basically in order to improve our iq or test our iq that is intelligent quotient so this particular kind of maze problem or this kind of learning where we want to find the optimal path in reinforcement learning is called as q learning so the q in q learning stands for quality and so the topic for today's video is q learning and we'll see what are the mathematics behind q learning so let's get started okay so before we begin about the q learning algorithm we have to understand some of the terms and concepts which are there in q learning or which are used to solve this kind of reinforcement learning problems so first of all there is a term called as policy so uh, you have your state as well as action so in q learning you have this parameter that is q and you have s that represents the state at given point of time uh, i write a subscript t and then you have a and t a for action so given a state at one particular point of time you have to perform some action at the same time now policy is referred as given by a pi on top of this so what do you understand by the term policy so in the real life also when you take some insurance policy you have some certain norms certain limitations certain rules regulations these things kinds of services are there in policy so similar is the case with q learning also you have certain limits certain regulations certain services which are to be provided which are not to be provided so policy is essentially uh, undertaken by agent so agent takes the policy and he sees in a given state what is the best possible action so that is simple uh, let me give you one example for this say uh, you are on a main road that is on a lane so uh, just the streets are just empty you are just the only one who is driving on that so what you will do is you will put on the top gear fourth gear and then you will just uh, accelerate and then you will just go so there at that point of time no one will instruct you like you have to uh, go on this speed or you have to apply this clutch and this stuffs so it's just upon you like you will just race the car so in that particular environment uh, your state is your car and the action that you do is you will just accelerate at the top speed so that is the policy you will take at that particular instant of time but that is not always the case uh, everywhere it's not like uh, on a crowded uh, street you do that thing 
so that is very dangerous to the pedestrians and the people who are there and also to the other vehicles so this is one essential term inside q learning that is policy next term that will be uh, discussing is about the reward so reward we have uh, seen many times like in the previous uh, slide also we have uh, seen a apple that was a fruit which is considered as a reward for that particular agent so whenever the agent does the rightful action uh, they will be awarded with a reward that is a gift or a present so in q learning reward is considered as a scalar quantity Uh, scalar means it can be measured so measured in terms of some units so usually uh, in real life we want to uh, buy some products or whenever the cost optimization cost estimation comes into picture we mainly use the reward of price so it can be in uh, any symbols like rupees or euros or dollars or any other cents which are there in the real world now uh, sometimes uh, we can play with this reward so if you are into a competition and if you are participating into some games or some hackathons or somewhere you'll basically get a reward so that can be considered as a positive reward and then sometimes you also face this reward as a penalty so that is not the reward instead it is considered as a negative reward so you don't use the word uh, penalty instead you use the word positive and negative reward here now where does negative reward comes into picture when you uh, park your vehicle at a wrong place or uh, if it's not at the uh, place to park and the police officer comes there and they just charge you that is just a, a penalty they are imposing on you so that essentially becomes a negative reward so uh, the same logic revolves in uh, machine learning agent also so agent will face positive reward and negative reward for each of the action which uh, it incorrectly implements so our goal is to maximize the positive reward that we want so reward can be considered as some energy points so it is given as uh, a power symbol something like this or it can be considered as price or uh, in that example we have seen a fruit example so all those things are considered as reward uh, that is positive reward and in negative reward you have something like uh, you have a mine that is bomb which is there so or uh, you may have like uh, reducing the lives so your health may be decreasing due to some activity so those things are considered as negative reward so these are the two important things apart from the state and the action uh, which you see in q learning algorithm now let us see uh, the two main backbones from where the q learning algorithm comes into picture so uh, in q learning the two main uh entities as in we can say as the q function and then you have something called as q table so uh, you basically construct a q table given a set of actions and uh, given the directions that you want to perform in that particular environment and then you apply a q function on top of this so q function is given as so that takes the optimal policy into consideration so that is the best action in that particular state so you have the state at that particular point of time and action at that particular point of time so uh, the q function is written as uh, the policy and it is the expected value of the rewards and the discounts so it is written in this way so you have rt plus 1 plus gamma r t plus 2 plus gamma square r t plus 3 up till you have gamma n r t plus n such that you have st and at so this is the q function that you mainly use in q learning and this particular equation which you see here 
this is called as the Bellman equation. So this you essentially use in Q learning. So this is the actual uh, mathematics or the power from where the Q learning algorithm learns. That is the Bellman equation. So that is one component uh, of Q learning. Then you have something called as Q table. So uh, in the maze problem which we saw in the beginning of the video, uh, there were only uh, four possible actions that that turtle could take. So it was either it can move in the uh, top direction or in the bottom direction or on the left side or on the right side. So these are nothing but your actions. Okay, so in Q table what you basically have is you have a table that comprises of the actions. So actions here are all these that is up down left and right and what on the rows comes is on the state so state is say this is the start state and this is the end state and you have the reward okay and then you have uh, some states like uh, it is uh, health minus minus that is the health decreases so q table is essentially a matrix given the number of uh, rows that is the states and the columns which corresponds to the actions so these two are the uh, two components which are seen in the q learning algorithm so you need to uh, make out this equation first and then you have to fill this q table so when we initialize this q table uh, at the beginning you fill all the values with zeros so all values are filled with zeros here and then you have uh, some parameter so that parameter is called as epsilon so which is a hyperparameter so hyperparameter is uh, something that we introduce explicitly which is not already present so uh, since you introduce a hyperparameter that is epsilon this follows a strategy called as the greedy strategy so initially uh, when you uh, just initialize or start the q learning algorithm with all the q functions and the q table with all the values initialized as zero you start this epsilon values with a very higher number so first you initialize this uh, epsilon value to a higher number then when the agent learns here and then now then you try to decrease it accordingly so that's how you do the reinforcement learning it's not a one-time activity it's uh, an iterative recursive approach that you follow every now and then at every time period so this brings us to a discussion that is a small discussion which is uh, seen here so whenever you do the q learning or whenever you have a maze that you want to solve so basically first and foremost thing what you see is the exploration so all the possible paths that are there that you first need to have an idea so first thing is called as exploration so first you will explore what are the possible available paths that are there in your system and then once you have done that you will do the exploitation exploitation means uh, the best possible path which will uh, take you the minimal amount of time to reach the reward or take the reward that you want to take into consideration so these two things go hand in hand but essentially first thing is exploration first to explore the entire map or the entire maze that is there in your uh, present scenario and then you will choose the best optimal path to reach your destination now we will see the main algorithm how the uh, q uh, table is updated or the q value functions learns and from where the uh, rewards comes into picture okay so now since we have uh, learned about what the q function is and the q table is we'll have a list of steps 
that we want to perform in the queue learning so first we initialize the queue table so that comprises of the states in the rows and the actions in the columns that is a n cross m state cross actions matrix that you have then out of all those possible actions you will choose only one action so remember you choose only one action at one particular point of time which is appropriate in that particular time period given that particular state then you perform that taken action uh, which is uh, chosen from the step 2 and finally if uh, there is a positive thing that has happened then you get a reward else you will get a negative reward that is a penalty then you have to measure the reward how good that reward is how much future steps you want to make so you basically measure the reward and finally you update your queue table and then you just uh, do the iteration of this particular steps again and again now we have seen what is the uh, meaning of queue that is the quality so quality is nothing but the best possible action which you take at that particular state and then you have the learning so any algorithm or let it be any machine learning algorithm we have seen the gradient descent or linear regression logistic regression anything these all algorithm basically learns so essentially there is some mathematics which is there behind this or there is a common backbone which is present in all these algorithms so this is the uh, equation by which the q learning algorithm learns just don't get frightened with this algorithm or the, with this uh, equation that is uh, very simple so uh, on the left hand side what you can see is the q value so uh, q function is a uh, parameter or takes two things that is the state at given point of time and then you have the action at that particular point of time so this essentially is the old value now you have to update this old value so for updating the old value you again take the old value here and you add with something here which is there in the brackets so this thing which you see here this is alpha this is nothing but your learning rate so the same thing you have seen in the gradient descent algorithm you have lambda you have alpha so the same thing is followed here that is alpha learning rate that is how much you want to learn so usually the alpha value is taken as 1 or 0 0.1 in this range very little small baby steps small learning rate but you don't take alpha as 0 so if you take alpha as 0 that means the old value is equal to uh, the new value so basically you are not learning anything in that particular stage so you don't go with alpha is equal to 0 instead you take alpha is equal to 1 or alpha is equal to 0 again this is a hyperparameter that you have to tune according to your uh, scenario then comes the thing which is there in the brackets so the first thing is called as the reward so reward at time period t plus 1 so initially from uh, time period t you went to t plus 1 which is incremental at each point of time so that is a unit increment in time so that means t plus 1 then accordingly you have t plus 2 t plus 3 and so on this thing we have seen many times but we have not discussed about this thing so this is called as a discount or a discount factor this is also a hyperparameter that you have to tune or you have to put so discount is uh, done in order to uh, give some kind of balance to this equation so that uh, it will not jump out of the range or jump out of the expectation so you multiply with this that is the maximum of q with the next state for the action so you have to maximize this a which you have here so that means the best possible action that is estimated best possible action so these three things that is the reward the discount factor and the estimated best possible action these three things comprises 
your learned value okay and then once you have this quantity you do the math here you subtract that with the old value so the resultant which you get that is the error so this is the learned value that is the target value and this is the old value that is the prediction you get the error that error you multiply with this uh, alpha that is the learning rate in order to correct this so that you can take the best possible action so this is the algorithm or math behind the q learning algorithm how it updates now if you want to have a implementation of this uh, we'll do a python implementation of the q learning algorithm in numpy uh, i'll make that video to make more understand of this concept so well that was all regarding the q learning algorithm in machine learning reinforcement learning so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you found you got educated watching this video please do like share comment and if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing thank you very much for watching this video